Well, Congressman, uh, you remember what happened the last time Israel went at war with the Six Days War and everything else. Uh, obviously, the people you know are saying this is the largest massacre of Jewish folks since the Holocaust. Um, you're you're privy to intel um, based on what you know about the Middle East. Uh, your thoughts? Well, it's true. Um, there is. Uh I don't know how much uh, how much video we've been sent, but I think I've seen all of it or close to all of it. And uh, uh, Kevin, uh, I've heard you say uh, on your show before that you have gone through the Israeli uh, Holocaust Museum or one of them. There's several of them around, and uh, uh, I think everybody should see it. And it's not because it's pleasant to see; just the reverse. Same thing with the footage that has come to us as a function of of this. Um, it's real. It, it is. It is as gruesome as it gets. It is as heinous as you have heard, plus some. There is no way that a sitting government can can sit back. And not respond. I've been I've been uh, interviewed on this already, and it's and and it was. Uh, what do you say about the calls by some of your colleagues for Israel not to respond? Israel is not responding. Israel is defending itself. And uh, if if uh, history plays out, uh, it, it, the uh, Israeli government, the Israeli military will strike, and they will strike very very hard. And soon the media will twist this into them being the aggressor. But that goes back to the original question that you had, and it had, what have I seen? Uh, what has actually transpired? And if anyone sees uh, what has actually taken place and the attack on civilians, the brutal, heinous, vitriolic attack on innocents, children, elderly, women and of course men but it's just as a as a as a man you're actually extra sensitive to the most vulnerable and uh uh words can't describe just how how uh, decimated that uh, uh some of these areas have been in in brutal fashion that you wouldn't think one human could commit against another Israel has a, every right to to uh, to defend itself and make sure this never happens again. Our great friend, Congressman Fulcher, joining us, Kevin Miller, KIDO Talk Radio. Congressman, so you had a chance to come back briefly. You, you hung out with our friends from the Mountain States with Dr. Carson and um, uh, the young lady from the Wall Street Journal. What was it like to, uh, to hear from Dr. Carson? And, I, and a lot of people don't know, but... You, you know, you were very close to the folks in the Trump administration, very close to those people. Um, what was it like to hear that American success story in Idaho? Ben Carson is, is a is a good man, and he is a tribute to uh, to all of us and a an inspiration to all of us and a uh, an example of what can happen when when uh, when you can make a success out of your life coming from pretty much literally nothing and what faith can do and what dedication can do and then what you can give give to society as a result of that and uh i, I just i've been impressed with dr carson for a long time and and that impressiveness just increased for me i had an opportunity to uh, um uh, to ride on the plane i was i literally just came back for for that event turned right around and i and i had a stop in north idaho and then back to dc but um, but Kevin, I, uh, I think all of us could learn from his life story. If your listeners have not had a chance to do that, I know he's got a number of books out there. There's at least one biography and, and, um, uh, Ben Carson came from, from literally nothing. And, uh, and by the way, he's also a, uh, a, a staunch, um, evangelist for America in the sense that, no, this is not a racist country. It is not systemic, and I am proof. And and so I, I just encourage everybody that if you're not familiar with his, his story, uh, get there because he's, uh, he's an inspiration for all of us. 
Our great friend Congressman Fulcher uh, talking about the Mountain States Policy Center's banquet, of course, with Kimberly Strassel from the Wall Street Journal. Okay, Congressman, so for the first time in our nation's history, a speaker has been removed. First of all, your thoughts on former Speaker McCarthy. Did he get a, really a fair shake? You've worked with Mr. McCarthy. He's been here. You're close to him. You're close to Jim Jordan. You've come out in support of Mr. Jordan. Uh, also, Steve Scalise. Everybody knows Russ Fulcher. You're good friends with everyone. Your thoughts on Kevin McCarthy and what happened to him? Well, just to, to paint that picture, Kevin, I think you need to look at the dynamic. Uh, 208 Democrats and eight Republicans removed the speaker, the Republican speaker. 208 plus eight. And so typically, if you just look at the numbers, that, that tells you a lot. Look at the data, that tells you a lot. And uh, uh, I am not throwing stones at my eight colleagues who chose to do that. But the bottom line was, it was, uh, it was played into the, the Democrat, the minority party hands to do it and to do it then. The timing was extremely bad. Uh, we were within days of completing the best set of appropriation bills in the United States of America, at least since 1998, possibly 1996, for everything, everything in the, in the United States federal government budget was reduced by between 25 and 30 percent. That's a huge cut, except for Medicare, Social Security, defense, and our veterans. And disaster. That has not been done. Well, it's. I don't think that's ever been done. Uh, but it's. It's the best set of appropriation bills to put us on track fiscally. And it would have been painful and all that. But we were doing it. We were going through those. And uh, and so the timing was extremely bad. I, I. I do not think it was warranted. We are where we are. And uh, and so hopefully we can turn this around and make something good come out of it. But. Uh, the, the this if there was going to be a challenge on the speakership, why couldn't it have been at the end of, of uh, this month after we had these bills in the rearview mirror? You still have the same arguments, but uh, that wasn't the that wasn't the move they made by the uh, uh, minority party and uh, a few of the Republicans. Our great friend Congressman Russ Fulcher joining us here on KIDO Talk Radio. So, Congressman. Where do we go from here as far as electing a new speaker? Well, in, um, in uh, let's see, I guess it's uh, at uh, uh, 8 a.m. Mountain Time today, we will convene for our first round of votes for a replacement speaker. And uh, I have I honestly have no idea if this is going to be one round or if it's going to be a couple of weeks. And, and I can see it going either way. I can tell you the vast majority of the, the, uh, uh, the Republican conference wants to get this done, get it done immediately. The Israeli conflict, the open border all add significant urgency, the appropriation process. The other thing is, remember, Kevin, we are, we've, we're just uh, uh, until November 17 on a stopgap measure for, for the uh, government operations to, to once again be um, potentially shut down with, uh, with the budget. So the appropriation bills are, are another thing adding urgency. Uh, but... Uh, uh, I, I honestly don't know how quickly that will happen. One of the things that we have stressed, myself included, is let's not walk out of that room unless we have the 217 of us necessary committed to do this on round one. We do not want another circus like uh, we had in January to send the signal to the world that we're still in disarray and you have 15 rounds of voting or whatever it was. Uh, we need to do this round one. Let's, let's have our fight and let's do it behind closed doors. Let's not give the media any more satisfaction. Let's not give the minority any more satisfaction. Let's not send a signal that we can't govern any longer. I mean, we've already done that, but let's not do that anymore. And I think most people agree with that. But um, until that comes down on the, on the floor vote, we won't know for sure. Congressman Russ Fulcher joining us. So, Congressman here on KIDO Talk Radio, 
basically the house is, is this correct? The house is in suspended animation? Well, we can function with our committee work. The chairman should, can still function. Some are, some aren't. With uh, our committee work and, and uh, doing the ground game for, for uh, uh, the bills that uh, are being vetted, amended, and prepped for the House floor, but the floor activity cannot. And so uh, in terms of anything passing through the House, yes, we are, we're virtually suspended at this point, and that's a constitutional provision. There needs to be a speaker in place. There is not. And so we're most of the operations of the U.S. House are, are uh, non-functioning. Um, now, uh, let me ask you the question, since we didn't uh, do this firsthand uh, before we got you on the air. Do you have a minute or you have to bolt? It's, I mean, you're doing the yes. people's work. No, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Congressman. More with Congressman Fulcher next here on KIDO Talk Radio. Wake up with Kevin Miller. Ride home with Lars Larson. Only on KIDO Talk Radio. Blessed to have you with us, our great friend Congressman Fulcher joining us. Congressman, let's talk a little bit about the committees. So committee works ha- work has been going on. What's the latest? What work have you been doing in your committees, uh, you know, in spite of uh, no Speaker of the House, sir? Actually, uh, the two that I serve on, Kevin, both uh, energy, energy and Commerce and Natural Resources, have held off. We are, those are two of the committees that the chairman have decided not to, uh, not to function. So... Uh, until the the speaker's in place, and I and I, I spoke to um, uh, uh, Chair Rogers uh, last night or night before last. Uh, geez, it's a blur. Night before last, and uh, and she said that uh, uh, because in, at least in her view, at least in part, um, the ch- the the committees are subject to review. The membership the chairmanships are all subject to review by the speaker. And that's set early in the, the session of Congress. The, the chair, the members are, are set, but it's signed off by uh, the speaker. And there is a very real possibility that whoever the new speaker is will, uh, will want some adjustments and uh, uh, can make some changes on, on who is where. And so um, there has been a lot of talk that, that uh, uh, a new speaker may change or remove committee assignments for certain people. I guess that's possible. I doubt it in this particular setting, but I don't know that. And so we have not been, uh, those two committees have not been functioning on regular work. Congressman Fulcher, um, you know, we go back to, again, you've been to Ukraine, you've been to the border, you've been to places, you've been to, to Maui, you've been to places maybe you can't even discuss. What What are your thoughts now on, America's commitment to Israel. We're putting in the carrier. We've got the usual suspect, Iran, behind this. So before we get to why the administration gave them money, your thoughts, again, your insight on our situation with our military since we've given a lot of money, a lot of resources to Ukraine. Well, first and foremost, and I was on uh, the uh, national network last night and discussed this. And these two situations are not comparable. Uh, Israel is a long, long, long time ally. We've had a memorandum of understanding for defense with them for decades. Uh, They are the first line of defense for terrorism in the United States because the sources of that terrorism is common between Israel and the United States. They They are truly a functioning democracy with at least a reasonable degree of uh, sophistication and accountability. They have an intelligence network that is unparalleled, uh, that serves interests of the United States. And and that's probably the biggest surprise I have with all of this is that apparently this attack came without their intelligence network picking up on it, or at least picking up on it to to the uh, point where they could prevent it. Um, and so that is our relationship with Israel, and, and that's that is longstanding. These are brothers and sisters, and that's uh, in the DNA of the relationship between America and Israel. With Ukraine, uh, they've got a they've got a hybrid government. It's technically a democratic elected leader, but it functions more like a dictatorship. We have already put in 113 billion with a B. I, I believe it's it's going to be close to that or at that number or, or close to it 
And there's a lot of us who, who, myself included, who have questions about should we continue to do that? And is it only prolonging something and, and discouraging efforts to come to resolution there if we just keep uh, sending weapons and, and funds and, and proxying this thing out? There are other ways to approach it. How can we best make this the highest cost to Russia, not necessarily lives, but in other ways? And so um, there's, this is not the same argument to me. These are two night and day uh, different scenarios. There's already been a, a, a move, Kevin, to try to combine aid, uh, uh, votes, and uh, actions in terms of foreign support, combine those two together. And, and uh, I, I, oppose, I oppose that. These are two entirely different uh, situations. Well, you're right about that. And, you know, the idea of our stockpiles being depleted because of Ukraine, and then we have, you know, this area now in the Middle East, um, obviously that's very concerning. I believe I was re- seeing some report where, uh, you know, we're already looking at to talk to the, the folks that create the munitions to, you know, stand by to, for, for more orders. Now, do you, were you on MSNBC last night? I, I must have missed that. It was on ABC, uh, the ABC National Affiliate. What? Hey, that's big news. You should you, please tell us when you're on. I, I, you know, I think that's that's awesome. Again, you know me, I'm a fanboy. Okay, back to Iran, sir. You're on KIDO Talk Radio. Um, see, I thought it would be Newsmax, but you got me there. Okay, so <laughs> um, back to. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't going to advertise for him, but you asked. <laughs> no, no, and, and you know something. Uh, you know, I'm I'm co-opted with you, so I I appreciate the sensitivity, but we're, well, that's fine, sir. Um, so uh, Iran, the president giving them money, the administration says, well, gee, there's no proof that this is happening. Um, we had an administration official two weeks ago saying the Middle East has never been more stable. Uh, your thoughts on Iran, and really the 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 thoughts of the House Republicans on the Hill. You may recall uh, under President Trump, we had a very uh, uh, landmark. Uh, event take place with the Abraham Accords. That was basically the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, and Morocco, all forming diplomatic relations with Israel, which is which is a landmark. That was a landmark situation. And to President Biden's administration's credit, he had continued that. And the next step was with Saudi Arabia, and uh, and this was very very close. And and another landmark scenario, if you understand the relations and the history with the Arab nations and Israel. Uh, for that to happen was truly a historic event in a positive way. Well, uh, Saudi Arabia and Israel have a common enemy, and that's Iran. And, uh, and, and we have a common enemy there. And, and Iran is the money and the, uh, the support base for Hamas, which is uh, basically the governance of the Palestinians. And so this timing was not an accident. This was uh, uh, um, uh, on Jewish holiday. Uh, with significant historic um, anniversary events that happened prior and just in front of when the the agreement between Saudi Arabia and Israel was to take place. And uh, and so this, there is there is no accident here. Uh, Iran is is living. There is there is not just religious tones that, that are uh, driving this conflict, but there's also financial ones. Uh, uh, Iran and Saudi Arabia compete as uh, oil providers. By the way, one more reason why America needs to be energy independent and produce our own. Uh, I hope uh, President Biden's listening. But um, that is just some of the complicated history that drove this to a point. But the fact that it happened when it did on the anniversary of uh, uh, previous conflicts, Jewish holiday, just before this agreement is struck between Israel and Saudi Arabia is no accident. And it's, uh, it's very destructive. And, of course, those disca- diplomatic discussions are now off the table until this gets resolved. Uh, tremendous setback. Congressman Fulcher, um, finally, uh, you know, we've got China lurking as well. And China is, is sitting back and, and watching this take place um, uh, and – like everything else uh, that has happened in the not too distant past with Afghanistan and with uh, uh, Ukraine and and Russia and uh, potentially uh, uh, Taiwan 
and they see the indecisiveness, the lack of leadership in America. They see us spending ourselves into oblivion and uh, sending our stockpile either uh, on, quote, loan, which I, I, I smile to myself when I hear we're loaning it to <laughs> Ukraine, and, uh, and we're selling it to Taiwan. Uh, they, they have to be sitting back and smiling. And, and by the way, I think that's also a, a reason why uh, Hamas struck when they did, too. They also knew, A, there's not a speaker in the United States. Now, these people, are they, they track our activities better than most Americans do. They know there is there's not uh, cohesive leadership in the U.S. House. And they know that we have a president that is very slow to respond, not decisive, not that wedded to Israel. This was a perfect storm for them. And, uh, and, and they are very in tune to what is going on here. They know we are weak. They know we are, 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 have depleted a lot of our resources. And they're taking advantage of that, Kevin. Congressman Fulcher, we appreciate you. Uh, I know you've got a busy week. Thank you for making time for us here, sir. Kevin, it's always a pleasure. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Our great Under f- better circumstances, let's hope. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Thank you. Our great-